Welcome back everybody. We are ready for another set of notes. So we need to flip to our unit five table of contents. And we're going to be on page 48. And we are going to be working on factoring still. So we're going to be factoring stuff that looks like this. So it's in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C. So these are trinomials. So remember, trinomials, they just have three terms. So they're always going to be in this form. So the notes that you're going to get, they look like this. So you'll just need to fold this piece of paper down and tape it on 48. So go ahead and do that now and then push play when you're done. Okay, so before we really get started with these notes, I want to show you a little something from a couple lessons back. So when we look back at x-intercepts and zeros, on the inside of this, we focused on going from standard form. This equation is in standard form. And then I wrote factored form right here, and I gave you factored form. And then from factored form, we could identify the zeros and then actually sketch the graph. Today, in the next couple of lessons, we're going to focus on how you go from standard form, which is this one, it's the AX squared plus BX plus C form, into what's what we call factored form. So I'm going to show you the process to go from standard form to factored form. That's what we're doing today. That process is called factoring. So now that we have the backstory on why factoring is important, we're trying to take this and get it into factored form. And factored form are the two sets of parentheses. So, the thing that we have to address at first is the form that they're in. This is called standard form. It's AX squared plus BX plus C. So, but whenever we get actual expressions, these A, B, and Cs, they always have numbers in them. So we need to be able to identify which ones are which. So when I look at this first example down here, you need to be able to identify, so when I see this A, it's always going to be attached to that X squared. So when I look at my example down here, that 2 is in front of that X squared, which means that's my A value. Then this 7 is in the B spot, so that's my B value. And then 6, since it's at the end, is going to be my C value. So we just need to make sure that you actually can identify these letters regardless of what expression you are given. Okay? So now from there, we actually can start the factoring process. So this process, once I show it to you, it's, it works the same every single time. So I want you to focus on the process. Once you get the hang of it, it'll go by a lot faster. So before we start, we have to rewrite this into four terms. So we need to take it from three terms to four terms. And how we do that is we take that middle term and we rewrite it, okay? So we're gonna split it up into numbers that we can put and that add to be seven or whatever. So in order to rewrite this middle term, that's where this X comes in over here. And we use an X because this is called the X method. So, we're just, I'm going to show you how to rewrite that middle term. So when we rewrite the middle term, we're going to take A times C and put that number in the top. And we get that A and C from over here. So in this particular example, that's going to be 2 times 6 because it's A times C, which is going to give me a 12. So I've got 12 in the top. And that's how it always is. So A times C is always going to be in the top. And then in the bottom, I'm going to have my B value. So the bottom of the X is going to be your B value. Now, this is kind of lame, but this is how I remember it. When I think of the word bottom, it starts with the B, and that's how I, know, that's how I remember that your B value goes in the bottom. So when I look at my example of here, 7 is my B value, so 7 is going to go in the bottom. So that's the setup of the top and the bottom of the X. It's always going to be like this, except these numbers are going to be different depending on whatever expression you're given. But it's always going to be A times C in the top and B in the bottom. Now, here's the hardest part about factoring. 
Got to be honest with you. This right here is the hardest part. So it says to fill in the sides of the X. So we need these two numbers right here. This is what we're going to rewrite 7 with. So we're we got to pick these numbers that actually work to rewrite 7. So it says to fill in the sides of the X, ask yourself what two numbers multiply to get A times C and add to get B. So we need two numbers, and that's going to go on each of these sides. So we need two numbers that when we multiply these two numbers, it gives me 12. But when I add these two numbers, it gives me 7. Okay, so it's multiply to be the top, add to be the bottom. Multiply to be the top, add to be the bottom. So what we need to do now is look at the factors of 12. So when we say multiply to be 12, we're talking about the factors of 12. So if you know your multiplication tables, this goes by a lot faster. But if you don't, you can always do this little trick right here. So I have 12. That's the top number. I'm going to figure out the numbers that multiply to give me 12. And I'm just going to write them all down. Always start at 1. So we have 1 times 12. 2 times 6. 3 times 4. And then that's it. Because 4 goes into 12, but then it's just 4 times 3, 6 times 2, 12 times 1. So it's the same list. Now, I know that all of these pairs of numbers multiply to be 12, but I need the pair that when I add them, they are equal to 7. And there's only one of them that actually works, and it's this bottom one right here. So the sides of my x are 3 and 4. These are the two numbers that I'm going to rewrite 7 with. So it says down here, once you have found those two numbers, rewrite the middle term with those. So this is the hardest part, okay? This over here is the hardest part. Once you know what these two numbers are, it's like three steps over here and then you're done. And these steps on this side are is the same thing over and over and over. So watch this. Now... This 3 and 4, all we have to do is we're going to take that 3 and 4 and rewrite that 7x. So I'm going to bring down my first term. So I'm going to bring down that 2x squared. I'm not going to do anything with it. And I'm going to bring down that plus 6 and not going to do anything to it. That 7x, though, I'm going to break it down. And this is going to be 3x and 4x. So... I want to give you a little bit of a hint. It's going to make your life a lot easier and save you a little bit of time. When you have these two numbers, pay attention to where you're putting them. You want to put multiples together. So this one's a 2, so I'm going to put that 4 first. So I'm going to put plus 4x, and then that's a positive 3, so that's going to be plus 3x. So pay attention to how you're putting them. Put like numbers together, so 2 and 4, those are multiples and then three and six are multiples. So, now that we have rewritten that seven X, we just broke it up into four and three, we now need to group them, okay? So we're going to group them, and I'm gonna use a blue pen. We're going to group them just like this, and it's you group them like this every single time. We're gonna group the first two terms together, and then the last two terms together. So first two terms, last two terms. And at this point right here, so after you group them, we're going to take GCF of each parentheses. Okay. So we did a little bit of work with GCF's last class. So we're just, after you group them, you're just going to take the GCF of each set of parentheses. Okay? So I'm going to use orange, my little orange pen, to actually write out the GCF of each one. So, real quick, 
GCF just means greatest common factor. So you're looking for what they have in common. So when I teach this, I always tell you to look at one parentheses at a time. So we're going to focus on that first set. So look at this very first one. We have 2x squared and 4x. So when you think about the numbers 2 and 4, they have a 2 in common. So I'm going to factor out the 2. Well, when I look at this, they also have an x in common. So I'm going to take that x out as well. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. And when I do that, i got to come up with what's left on the inside after I take that out. Okay? Let me move this up just a little bit. So... I have 2x, there was 2x squared to start, and I took 2x out, so there's just an x left there. And then to get to this one, this is going to be 2 times this number right here. It's empty right now, but 2 times this number gives me 4x. So that's going to be plus 2. And you can always check by redistributing. So 2x times x is 2x squared, 2x times 2 is 4x. Okay, now here's an important piece. That plus sign right there, we're going to bring it straight down. Bring it straight down. Now we're going to take the GCF of the second set of parentheses, so 3x plus 6. The GCF of that is just 3. So I'm going to take a 3 out. And then, of course, i got to figure out what's left after I take out the GCF. So that's going to be x right there, because 3 times x gives me 3x. And then 3 times what gives me 6? And that's plus 2. So now we've done this. We've taken out our GCFs. Now you just have to rewrite it, and then you're done. You have completely factored it. So you pretty much have completely factored it right now. You just have to rewrite it and make it look a little bit nicer. But before we rewrite it, I want to point out something that is super, super important. These two right here, these sets of parentheses have to match. If they do not match, then you have taken out the GCF incorrectly. So make sure that these match. But if they match, which they normally will, just make sure you take your time. All you have to do is rewrite them. So we're going to take this. And we're going to take this other GCF, and we're going to make a parentheses, make a factor out of those. So it's going to be 2x plus 3. So all we did was take the GCFs and put them in a parentheses together. And then you just bring down the other one. And then it's x plus 2. And this is it. This is factored form. So I'll give you a second to finish writing. Now, what I want to show you real quick, all we do when we factor, so let me show you. If we were to take this and multiply it out, so that's either with the, the FOIL method or with the box method, this is what it looks like. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. 3 times x is 3x and then plus six. Then when we, we would combine like terms right here, so we would get 2x squared plus 7x plus six, okay? That's what we did, and that's what we worked on at the beginning of the school year. What you're doing now is going backwards. So instead of starting with the stuff in parentheses multiplying to get the standard form, we're starting with standard form Figuring out, we took a step back. So this step right here and this one are the exact same. The GCF part is what sets it apart, and we can go back to factored form. So it's just the reverse of multiplying. Okay? Okay, so now let's look at the inside of this foldable. There are several more practice problems because I know it seemed like a lot for that first one because I had to explain every little thing that we did. But now that we're moved past the first one, they should go by a little faster. So I'm going to do a couple more with you and then I'll let you try some on your own. So let's take a look at number two. We have 
another, it's a trinomial. They're always going to be a trinomial. So we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. The very first thing that you should do is label out your A, B, and C values. So we have A, B, and C. You need to know which one is which. And then after you do that, we are using the X method, which means you're going to have to draw an X. So this X doesn't have to be like super big. Just draw like one like that size maybe, so not super big. And then I'm going to, for now, for notes, we're going to write out what goes where in the X. So the top is A times C, and B goes in the bottom. So now let's fill that out based on the expression that we were actually given. So A times C is this one. So it's 2 times negative 5. So that's going to be negative 10. And then I've got B in the bottom, which is going to be 3. Now, we have to deal with that negative 10 up there. So I'm going to show you how you actually deal with that. So remember, these two numbers that we have on the sides, they're going to multiply to give me negative 10, but add to be 3. So multiply to the top, add to be the bottom. So what we need to do, and you can do it over here, write small though, because it doesn't need a whole lot of space. We need to get the factors of 10. We're, get, we're wanting two numbers that when we multiply them, it'll give us 10. So when I look at, when I think about 10, we have one times 10 or two times five. Those are, those are the only two pairs of numbers that actually work. So, one of them have to be negative, though, because this is a negative 10. We have to really pay attention as to which one has to be negative. So, when I look at these two numbers, there's no way that I can manipulate this 1 and 10 to be 3. It can either be 9 or maybe 11, okay? So, it's not going to be 3. But this 2 and 5 down here, I can like add and subtract maybe and make it be positive 3. Now, so I chose 2 and 5, okay? Which one of them has to be negative in order to make this whole situation work? So I know one of them has to be negative because this top is negative because that's negative 10. But I need one of them to be negative that when I add them, it's positive 3. So you can test it out. If this 2 is negative, then that's going to be negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. But negative 2 plus 5 is going to give me 3, which actually works. So the 2 is the one that has to be negative. So these are the numbers that we've got to use. Again, this part over here is the hardest part, okay? Because you have to figure out what numbers, because it's very specific. Only one set of numbers will actually work. Okay, so then now we just go over here and we do our two little steps and then we'll be done. So, these numbers, the whole point of them was to rewrite that middle one. So, I want you to draw your arrows from the middle one because that's the one that we're rewriting. Bring down your first term and your last term. And then take these and put them in the middle. Remember, pay attention to where you put them, though. If the numbers are the same, put them together. So that minus 2, it's going to be minus 2x. Make sure you put x's with them. And then that plus 5 is going to be plus 5x. So all we did was basically uncombine like terms. We split that 3x up, and this is what it was. So now group them. Group them. When I say group them, I'm talking put parentheses around the first two terms and the last two terms. And you can put a little note, take GCF. So group them and then we'll take the GCF. All right, so then let's look at this first set of parentheses. And remember, you only do one set of parentheses at a time. So I like to cover this second one up so I do not get confused. Because when I only see this, it makes it a lot simpler in my head and I don't get distracted by everything else. So 2x squared and 2x. Well, they have a 2 in common for sure. 
And they also have an X in common, so I'm gonna take that out too. And when I do that, so it was 2x squared, I took 2x out, which means I left a squared in, or an x in there. And then these are exactly the same, except that's a minus sign, so it's got to be minus 1 on the inside. And I know that because if I do 2x times negative 1, it gives me negative 2x. So there's that one. Now, bring down this plus sign every single time. We're gonna drop it straight down. And then you just take the GCF of the second one. So five X minus five, well, they've got a five in common. And then if I do, if I figure out what's left, it's gonna be X and then these match, this just opposite signs, so that's gonna be minus one. So you're pretty much done. You just gotta rewrite it and make it look nicer. So remember, when we rewrite it, we're taking the GCFs that we just found. And writing them together. So it's gonna be two X plus five and then X minus one. And there you go. So remember, these right here were supposed to match. If they didn't match, you just gotta slow down and redo the GCF part. But that's it. It's the same three steps every single time. So when I say the same three steps, it's fill out the X, group them, take the GCF. That's pretty much it, okay? The X over here is gonna be the hardest part. Okay, so I want to try one more with you before I let you do another, do one on your own. And let's look at three. I was just picking which one I wanted to do. Take a look at three. So three, another trinomial, of course. It says 6x squared minus 11x plus three. So let's label our letters here. So we have A, B, and C. Those are our letters. They correspond with those numbers. And then I need to draw my X. I gotta have the X. Remember, do not draw the X very big. It does not have to be a very big X. A times C goes in the top. B goes in the bottom. So then let's just fill this out. So A times C, that's gonna be six times three which is 18, and then B, that's gonna be negative 11, because it's just the B value over here. So now, I need to fill out the sides of the X, so I need two numbers that will add to give me 18, not add, sorry, that will multiply to give me 18, but add to be negative 11. So multiply to the top, add to the bottom. So we need the factors of 18, and I'm gonna put them over here to the side. So write out the list of factors for 18. So we have one times 18, two times nine, we got three times six, four doesn't go into 18, five doesn't go into 18, and then we're back to six. So this is it. These are all of the factors of 18. So now I need to choose which one of these sets will actually work for this set, like this little scenario over here. Now, this number's positive, this one's negative. That actually means that both of these numbers are gonna be negative. So when I first, so I'll tell you how I do it. When I first glance at this, I'm like, ooh, two and nine, they make 11. I can probably swing that one. So we got two and nine. The kicker though, both of these are gonna have to be negative. Because think about it, negative two times negative nine will give me positive 18 comes because two negatives make a positive. But then when I add negative two plus negative nine, that gives me negative 11. So these are the two that are actually gonna make it work. So again, this is the hardest part, figuring out what actually goes in those sides of the X. Once you get over here, it's just rewrite the middle. So let's rewrite this middle one. So I'm gonna bring down my first term and my last term. 
And then I'm gonna take the two that I circled over here and put them in the middle. Pay attention to how you group them though. I'm gonna group the two with the six. That's how I'm gonna do it. So two minus two X minus nine X. That'll work. Then let's group them. Notice that when I group them, I'm always leaving that middle sign out. You wanna leave that very, very middle sign out. So we grouped them, now it's GCF. So we're gonna take the GCF. So again, only look at the very, very first one. Do them one at a time. Six X squared minus two X. So those are both multiples of two. I can, six can be divided by two. So I'm gonna take out the two and they also have an X in common. So I'm gonna take that X out. And what's gonna be left when I do that, looks like it's gonna be three X minus one. Now, let me explain how I got that. Two times three is what gives me that six. And then there was an extra X that I needed to come up with because there were two to start with. Then that minus one came from two X times negative one, which is negative two X. That's how I figured it out. So then I move over here to this side to do the second one. I bring down that middle sign, super important, bring down that middle sign, and then just take the GCF. So nine X plus three, so nine and three. I can take out a three for those. And then I'm gonna have three X minus one. Okay. And now you just rewrite them. So I take this one and this one, the GCFs, the stuff not in parentheses, and you make a parentheses with them. So we have 2x minus 3 and then 3x minus 1. And there you go. Now I want you guys to take a look at that bottom right one, the one that says multiple response. This is the last one that I'm gonna walk you through and then I'm gonna let you try some on your own. So before I actually do this question, the phrase multiple response means that there is more than one correct answer. So when you're doing this, there are going to be at least two correct answers. Anytime you see that phrase, it just means there are more than one. So the question is, which of the following expressions describes the complete factorization of the quadratic expression and then it gives us an expression? Now, if you're like me, you look at the answer choices to kind of start, they, and if you look at the answer choices, they actually guide you in the direction. So when I look at this, factored form is always two sets of parentheses usually. So we have two sets of parentheses in all of these, but on some of them, they got a five out there in the very, very front. That five in the very, very front means that they took a GCF of five at the very, very beginning. So, let's check it out. We have 15X squared minus 25X minus 10. Well, when I look at that, it's 15, 25, and 10. Those are all multiples of five. So, we definitely can take out a five. So, down here in the bottom, that's where we're going to do all of the work. I want you to, let's start by rewriting it first. So that way we can do all of the work on the bottom. So I just rewrote it for now. Now, the reason you wanna check for a GCF at the very, very beginning, this is the only one that actually has a GCF at the very, very beginning, um, is because if you can take the GCF out, it makes your numbers a lot smaller and easier to deal with. So let's go ahead and factor out a five and see what we're left with after we take out the five. Five is the only thing I can take out because that 10 doesn't have an X with it, so it's just a five. So I'm dividing all these by five to come up with the numbers. So it's gonna be three X squared 
minus 5x minus 2. And there we go. So, see how these numbers went? They're way smaller now. So, they used to be 15, 25, and 10, and now they're 3, 5, and 2. So, they're a lot easier to deal with. So, now, we're going to actually factor what's inside the parentheses. So, this 5... We'll keep in the back of our brain, but it'll show up at the very, very end. You don't really do anything with it anymore. So, let's factor that out. So, I'm going to go over here to the side, and we're going to draw the X like we need. Remember, A times C goes in the top, and B goes in the bottom. So, this one's going to be 3 times negative 2. So that's negative six. B looks like negative five. So we have negative six and negative five. So I'm gonna think about the factors of six. We have one times six and two times three. Now, that six up there is negative, which means that when I plug these in, one of them have to be negative. So I need to come up with the one that I can actually make be five. So this one's a little tricky. You can do trial and error to like actually make it work. So if I'm gonna do the trial and error thing, I'm gonna start with one and six. So I got one times six. One of these has to be negative in order to get that negative six. So I need to pay attention to the bottom. And remember, these add to be negative 5. So if I did, if I let that 1 be negative, then this would be a positive 5. So that's not going to work. But if I let this 6 be negative, that's the same as 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. But then 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. So these are our two numbers that we needed. So now we come back over here. And we're going to split the middle. We're going to split that middle term. So I've got 3x squared. Oh, I'm going to put the 6 in the front. Minus 6x plus 1x minus 2. So we bring down the first and last term, and we're rewriting that middle term. Now we're just going to group them. Just like that and then take the GCF. So this GCF, we have 3x squared. So I'm going to cover up everything so that way we don't get distracted. So we have 3x squared minus 6x. These have a 3x in common. And when I take out that 3x, I'm going to be left with an x because there were two. I took out one. There's one left. And then 3 times negative 2 is going to be what gives me that negative 6x. So then I move on to the other one. So I'm going to bring down that plus sign, always. Now, our numbers are 1 and 2. The only thing that 1 and 2 have in common is a 1. So make sure, if it doesn't look like you can take out a GCF, you can always take out a 1. And then if we look, that's already going to be x minus 2. And then we just rewrite it. So when we rewrite this, give me just a second, got to move this piece of tape. And it didn't work. All right, so now we're going to rewrite this. So you just group them, take this 3x and this plus 1, and make it a parentheses. So 3x plus 1. And then I've got x minus 2. But what a lot of people forget is this 5 that they originally took out. we got to bring this 5 down. And that 5 just sits on the very outside. So this is the complete factorization of this expression, okay? Now, I need to take this, choose the one that matches it. So the one that matches it is B 
that's the one that matches it exactly. So we got answer choice B. The other one that is correct would be answer choice D. Because the only thing that's different between B and D is these are flipped around. Which that doesn't matter. As long as both of them are there, then that's okay. And there you go. So be careful when you see the phrase multiple response because it just means that there are more than one. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do now. I know this video was long. This is a very brand new topic. That's why it has to be so long. But I want you guys to try problems two, four, and five. I left those blank for you to get a good amount of practice in on your own. So once you get done with those, push play on the video, and then I will give you the correct answers, okay? So, go ahead and work on those, and then when you're done, push play. As always, I'm gonna show you guys the correct answers so that way you have them for your notes. So here's number two. So if you don't have it exactly correct, that's okay. These are just notes, so just fix them. Again, I always say that this X over here is the hardest part, and that's because if there's negatives, you gotta figure out where they go. This one was pretty straightforward because everything was positive. They're, they're the easier ones to do. Four and six multiply to give me 24, but they add to give me 10. So then I go over here, I group them with the blue, take the GCF, and then rewrite my factors. Here's four. Four was a little bit more challenging because the eight in the bottom there was negative. But I knew it had to be three and five, but if both of them are negative, so negative three times negative five is positive 15, but negative three plus negative five is negative eight. So then I bring it over here, I group them, take my GCF and rewrite. And then here's number five. Number five, we had a negative in the top and bottom. So that means one of them ended up being negative and it had to be the 10 because three minus 10 gives me negative seven. So again, I come over here, grouped them, took the GCF and then rewrote them. So I do have some practice problems for you to do. Good job on today's notes. I know that they were new. It is a challenging topic, but like anything else that you do in life, with practice, you will get better at them. So I do have some practice problems for you to work on, but I am really proud of you guys.